So again, welcome everyone. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, if you have the ability to use the chat, you could enter in um, the chat where you're coming from. Are you a community member? Are you in Thunder Bay? Um, are you coming from a distance? It'd be neat to kind of see who's all in the crowd and uh, get to hear a little bit more about you guys. I'm just sitting here looking for <laughs> all the technology in the background here, as you can probably tell. So. From Ottawa. Be able to still view it. Hello to Holly. Holly's in Thunder Bay as well. So thanks for watching. I think there's two Hollies on the line today. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you for those of you who are in attendance right now. Um, and I'll try to keep on the chat and the <laughs> window for um, the waiting room for slowly kind of getting back. And so thank you for attending this afternoon session, uh, our March speaker series at Sarah. My name is Cassandra and I'm a community developer here, uh, or sorry, a curriculum developer here at Sarah. Um, our, and I'm joined today by Nancy Angus. Um, we'll get to a little bit of our introductions um, shortly, but today we'll be talking about some of the community engaged work that we've been part of here in Thunder Bay and how it's kind of been making some impacts to community members across um, our community um, personally, but also potentially strengthening bonds uh, in organizations and, and further out. Before we get started, um, Nancy and I are doing this presentation from Thunder Bay, which is where we're currently. We um, we are Lake Kent University and Thunder Bay is a traditional land of William First Nation, signatory of Superior Fifty, and. Um, also want to recognize that just obviously um, mentioning and acknowledging the land that we're on is just one very small, um, a very large effort that we are on to, um, to work towards reconciliation and decolonization. Um, in, my, um, in my current work, um, I look to try to um, learn more about Indigenous methodologies, incorporate that into my work, um, and I'm also uh, involved in furthering my um, education about Indigenous knowledge in other ways as well. So, um, so I'll let Nancy introduce herself first. So go ahead, Nancy. Hello, I'm um, a retiree, but not um, not one of those quiet retirees. I'm a busy retiree. So um, I've always been involved in community programming from the grassroots level, um, mostly recreation based. Um, and in 2019, started my own little business, which is called um, Age Big. And I've had the great pleasure of working with Cass for many years now. <laughs> and uh, it's a pleasure to be with everyone today. And I think also I just wanted to say that what we're going to do today is really kind of fun. Um, it's kind of March break right now. So for those of you who still even have that feeling of being in school, um, we want to show you some pictures. We want to give you some um, success stories of things that we feel that we've been working on along the way. Uh, and we hope you enjoy it. And 
as I mentioned earlier, my name is Cassandra. I'm a curriculum developer here. I'm also um, a current PhD student um, at Western University. Um, and most of my work in that involves um, occupational science and older adults. So looking at um, the different everyday activities and occupations older adults engage in um, that bring meaning to their lives you know, with a particular focus on place, which might be a bit of a thread throughout some of this presentation today as well. Um, and then for the center as a curriculum developer, I work um, with closely with Holly Prince and Jessica Wyatt um, developing palliative care uh, curriculum for indigenous communities. Uh, so like Nancy said, it's we're trying to make it um, a, a more of a discussion <laughs> than anything, um, but just kind of getting some of the projects that we've been working on that we're really proud of and have been meaningful, not only to us, but to a lot of the people who've been involved. Um, and trying to share a little bit about how things like this um, can really be meaningful and impactful to the community, but also potentially be helpful for um, you and applicable to where you are in the work that you're doing. So we're kind of gonna highlight a couple of the projects that we've been part of and um, go through kind of this structure, um, talking about um, how the project started, who was involved, what was involved in the project and some of the uh, meaningful outcomes throughout. So this is how it started. I met Matt uh, Cass in uh, 2015. Um, when I worked for the city of Thunder Bay and uh, we had a, a, a walking program in a sports dome, uh, uh, a sports dome in Thunder Bay, uh, which has since collapsed. Um, but um, Cass came in and said she was working and wanted to volunteer and she was working on a master's program. She just moved to Thunder Bay and we had people walking on a soccer field, hundreds of people every day when we had walking. And uh, we tracked the numbers and we were able to say out of a couple of months that we did the program, we finally hit a 10,000 number. So that was um, one of our hows was just a walking program, um, bringing people together, mostly people who were retired. Uh, we had able walkers, but also people who are a little frailer. And um, the outcomes of that is that uh, people made friends, they made connections, they came, uh, some people walked to get to the sports dome, they took the bus, uh, they got family members to come, and it was a, a, an incredible way of, of building community from the grassroots up. Yeah, and for myself, I entered into uh, this program um, as part of my master's. So um, I not only was able to be involved in the program as a volunteer helping set up and uh, welcoming people to the building, um, moving, as you see in the middle, those uh, bleachers into the middle and helping the volunteers, a, a large group of older adult volunteers um, facilitate the event. So some of the neat things too about this work that we're gonna talk to you today about today is that um, even a lot of people behind the scenes um, who aren't necessarily participants in the project or program um, are also older adults. It's, it's a big, it's a big um, community of older adults that are not only kind of being involved in um, the facilitation, but also in the participation of, of the event. And that's kind of what is key to kind of making these things um, successful. So through this, I was able to um, work on my thesis, but also um, some of the work that came out of it led to presentations, um, to walkability. Uh, after the dome collapse, we were used some of that work to try to get another place um, for all of these hundreds of older adults to come walk in the winter time. And a funder, because originally this was the first program outside of, um, it was funded by an elderly person center grant. It was the very first program in Ontario that was funded as an elderly person center grant outside of an elderly person center. And at the time I worked for the city of Thunder Bay's um, older adult centers. Um, so uh, we were able to pay 
to rent um, a, a business, uh, the Sports Dome, and uh, provide the walking program free of charge. But again, it changed many people's lives, and um, mine included, for the better. <laughs> And so from there, um, we move on to the, the Giants project. Did you want to introduce the Giants? Yeah, I, I'll introduce it. I, um, there was a couple of years in between, uh, St. Joe's Care Group and Thunder Bay um, have a research showcase. And I went one year, not as a researcher, because I've always been just a community person, um, not an academic. And that's where Cass comes in as the academic and I come in as the grassroots person. Um, but I saw digital stories being presented uh, from with youth that were living in northern indigenous communities in um, northwestern Ontario. And I was so enamored by digital story that I said, I want to find a way that we can get older adults to create their digital stories. And sure enough, we, with the funding from New Horizons for Seniors Program um, with, and many, many partnerships, including the City of Thunder Bay, um, Lakehead Social Planning Council, Age-Friendly Thunder Bay, um, Sarah here at the university, we created this program called Grand Individuals Aging with Neighbors in Thunder Bay which stands for the acronym. Everybody loves <laughs> acronyms if you work for government. Um, it's giants. And we feel that these giants um, were a group of friends, or excuse me, a group of strangers who came together and then through the creative process of making a digital story have become friends. And we're gonna show you some of those um, outcomes as we go along for the next couple of minutes. Yeah, and in addition to um, some of these I'm just going to mention it now because that's the image that's on the page here. Um, but research did come out of this project, um, but it wasn't necessarily a research project to begin with. So the um, the community based project was born from the community and um, collaborations with a friendly Thunder Bay and other organizations to actually acquire this funding and um, put the, pro the program and the project together. Um, and the research kind of came after. But I, what I've learned about research is if you do have something documented with research, sometimes you get funding to do other things. <laughs> so you know, having to be that grassroots person, you're always looking for funding. And um, and I, you know, I think that's one of the really cool things that's happened. We've made differences for people's lives, but we've been able to keep some threads going. Um, so some of the collaborators that um, that were involved with the Giants project were, um, of course, some of the funders that we've already spoken about, Sarah, Lakehead University, Age Friendly, Thunder Bay, but the Thunder Bay Public Library, the Thunder Bay District Health Unit who were involved, uh, and Magnus Theatre, because when we did create the 10 digital stories with the Giants project, uh, we rented our theater here in Thunder Bay and uh, for over 200 people and uh, packed the theater so people could watch the digital stories in person. And I have one little story that I want to talk about because I always think about the human thread that comes out of doing any kind of project. Um, so you see the fellows there in the picture, there's two men holding a wooden clock and one of the people in his digital story talked about going to a garage sale to meet friends or to meet people because he lived alone in his apartment. Well, he showed this clock in his digital story. When he was showing it at the Thunder Bay Public Library, one of the people in the audience who happened to be Frank said, I made that clock <laughs> that Brian bought at the garage sale. And so we got a picture of the two of them together. So it's just the synergy that happens with creative projects. Yeah, and it's kind of to um, the neat part of not just the benefits coming out of the project itself, but it's those things that kind of um, unfold after and those connections that people are making, even after the funding is spent um, and these legacy pieces kind of just exist, um, they're still, we're still able to kind of draw on them either for education purposes, using them in um, art galleries, um, museums, exhib exhibits, classrooms. Mm -hmm. They've been shown in classrooms. They've been part of conferences around uh, international conferences as well as national conferences. So it's um, it's it's a remarkable way. Mm -hmm. uh, of, and we're so grateful. And there's some people in the audience today who were gutsy enough to be a storyteller. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, it's a very, very hard thing to do. And it's also putting yourself out there. So we're very grateful to our 
older adult team of wanting to be filmmakers. Um, and so this is just uh, a collection of some of the photos. The Digital Story Project was uh, a three-day intensive um, workshop that involved these older adult volunteers kind of coming together and working with Story Center Canada to develop these digital stories and refine their own stories. Um, so these are just a, a collection of that. And did you want to maybe mention Razzie's story? Yeah, so I, again, I think the 10 storytellers that came together were strangers. And then through this three-day intensive, which I would recommend highly, um, people become friends. And you're not just friends for you know a week or two, you become lifelong friends. So um, the picture we have in the bottom right-hand corner is Razi, uh, who was one of our, Razi Ahmed was one of our participants. Um, and he stayed in touch with, with people through the program. He's since moved away from Thunder Bay, now lives in Toronto. Um, and he wanted to share with everyone in his giant friendship group that he had become a Canadian citizen. He and his wife, Shwapna, were Canadian citizens. Yeah, did anyone, I know there are obviously some of these Thunder Bay <laughs> age-friendly giants in the in the group today. Did anyone want to um, unmute themselves or enter in the chat? Anything about your experience having been involved in it or um, like those, the days that it was done or even after that? It's Judy, I, I, I can't say enough about going through this experience. It was a huge, huge learning curve, but I'm so grateful for having that, have the opportunity and being, in, in being invited to participate in this workshop. Thank you again, Nancy. Thanks, Judy. Thank you, Judy. And all of these videos too are still available online. Um, I know they're stored on the, um, age friendly Thunder, Thunder Bay website, but they're also on Story Center Canada, um, their website as well. And we can get the links to you afterwards if you want to see them. Yeah. And Judy's comment if you look at Judy Mostow's story, um, the line that she uses in her story, I don't I hope you don't mind me sharing this, Judy, is you don't need a lot of space, but you need your space. And I think that kind of completely dovetails into one of the projects that we did, which was called the Giant's Castle, which was making your home age ready. So it doesn't matter what size of home you have, but um, you might need to make some modifications for that house. So we tried to create um, a really cool outside the box type of event. So it wasn't just a vendor showcase of people who are gonna take your money to renovate your house. Um, it was people that you could engage with that you felt comfortable with that would maybe help you make some small modifications or big modifications that if you wanted to age it in place. And we did this in 2019 um, and we set it up with about 20 vendors around the, around the um, uh, perimeter of this building. But what we did was kind of we know that the kitchen is the heart of the home. So we set up kitchen tables in the middle of the room with some conversation starter questions. And we tried to get people to kind of chat to each other, strangers to come together at the kitchen table with really good home baked cookies. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of our giants from the, the first iteration of this project in, um, in 2017 was actually our resident baker that provided all the uh, the cookies. And she didn't volunteer because we had a grant, we could actually pay her for baking. Yeah. So, so that was kind of cool. We have some more um, info about kind of what this event looked like. Cause although it was a one day kind of showcase, um, there were other components um, to it as well. Um, there were hundreds of people that checked in Mm -hmm. that signed in with the event. Um, in addition to there being these tables and kind of these vendors around the room who were really not selling anything. They were offering programs that um, older adults could use um, that weren't necessarily you had to go. <laughs> so it's like dog walking. Like the things that you hear about, if you do work in, in uh, acute care hospitals, one of the stresses that I've heard from people is that um, no one's walking my dog. 
Um, no one's cutting my grass. Um, so we really what we wanted to do is um, if I'm in the hospital for a long time, who's checking my house for um, leaks? So those were some of the um, uh, some of the services that we really wanted to highlight. So it was, it was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Junk removers for junk downsizing. Which is again, which is like 2019, before everybody started downsizing during the pandemic. And um, you know, we really wanted to highlight some legitimate companies that were were helping people. The other thing we really did too was incorporate um, a partnership with Thunder Bay um, Thunder Bay's transit system to kind of bring their bus to show people how you could actually drive on a bus or get on a bus, be a, um, a, a patron. And also in Thunder Bay, we don't have um, uh, we don't have an Uber service, but we have what's called U Ride. So we had someone from U Ride come to show uh, people how they could actually set up their account on their phone. Yeah, and we had some interesting talks about um, like a lot of the topics that were raised around this de developed through focus groups, like talking with and speaking with older adults in the community, but also um, from different um, community needs assessments that had existed through a trendly and different community plan. So we knew that housing and transportation were were important to the older adults in our community. And um, more and more needs assessments just keep showing those same things. So we thought, what is a way that we can kind of help, but also get people out of their, their homes and kind of interacting one-on-one -on -one with others. So even seeing people being able, they, they, Thunder Bay Transit like had a bus there <laughs> and they were showing people exactly how to do it. U Ride was showing people, this is how you can download that. This is how that works. We had speakers um, on different types of housing you can kind of move into and co-housing, co-housing, co -housing, where people are still contacting me today saying, who are those people that talked about co-housing? Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is 2019. And so really there's, there's so much opportunity to get these conversations and continue the conversations. And people, it's, it was helpful too for connecting with people who are already providing these services. A lot of times um, with our, with the healthcare professions, we, we know the people who are providing service delivery, healthcare service delivery, but there's others also in the community that um, are not necessarily mandated, but they are providing supports and services to older adults or that could be useful to older adults even though they're not exclusive people and um, building these awesome connections with people like everyone was having a great time yeah, <laughs> so one of the really important if you talk about community collaborations there's many people looking how to start up a business these days and what are they're always told who are your markets who are your markets and so I really feel in any of the work that we do with older adults, we really have to kind of help businesses to start up that are going to provide the kinds of services that we want for ourselves. So I think this was another way of people being of all ages being invited um, to this event and just a chance to kind of see what we could do. Yeah, and then so Giants was back in 2017. Um, 2019 was the, the second the showcase of the castle. And even um, into 2020, we're still having outcomes um, and other kinds of mini projects coming out of those original ones, um, just based on the legacy kind of pieces that came out of it. And you can see in the top there, the Thunder Bay Art Gallery hosted an exhibit of the photos taken with the Giants for the Giants project um, through both of the, through this, um, the Giants um original project, um, one of my roles as a student at Sarah um, in my practicum was to help develop this booklet. Um, and it was involved um, the photos, the full script of the digital stories, um, some discussion questions to kind of facilitate more of its use in education. And also like within it, you could click on a button and you would be able to listen to that person tell their story. So in addition to being able to go watch these videos on their own, there were these other components that kind of live on. And I think that's the really key thing if you're not familiar with digital story is it's the audio is the person who's written the story telling the story. So it's not like a narrator or anything else. It's um, That's what makes it impactful to me. And of course, 
with the pandemic and uh, we have to go back to that one slide though. You have to go back. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I have to show you this 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 art gallery <laughs> showcase was on March 12th, 2020. Where were you on March 12th, 2020? <laughs> this was when Thunder Bay shut down and uh, Cass had her computer because she was doing a presentation that day um, at the opening that we had at the art gallery. And she was worried that her computer was going to be locked in because those pictures that are up there on the wall at the art gallery uh, didn't come down for six months. <laughs> the, the gallery closed that night. So yeah, the timing of that was was pretty funny. Um, so um, with some of these other projects to um, develop, age big kind of came and developed through that. And that's um, Nancy's small business. Um, and we continued to acquire some kinds of funding to be able to do smaller projects that kind of keep you interacting with the community without necessarily having to be research um, based, but still kind of facilitating those connections even during times when that wasn't really possible either. Yeah. Pandemic lock <laughs> lockdown. I think this is an interesting project because it wasn't it wasn't through a grant. It was basically um, just tell us some special women in your life or men, uh, special people in your life who would deserve a, a bouquet of flowers. And we uh, partnered with um, uh, Oralie Michaud, who runs uh, Seeds of Joy Backyard Flower Farm in Westport. Uh, and you can see she created some phenomenal um, bouquets from her with her flowers in her backyard. And uh, we delivered them. And again, one of the most um, incredible special days with our photographer, Melissa Defoe. Um, and really, it, it, you don't realize how much something really small uh, makes such a huge, big impact in people's lives. And so that kind of brings us to our um, places and faces, this next digital story project that we've um, been working on in partnership with the Thunder Bay Museum. Um, so just recently <laughs> with a, an Ontario Seniors Community Grant um, that we acquired back in the fall, um, we were able to get together with our team, our intergenerational team, but predominantly older adults uh, together with some calls for volunteers in the community just to see if they would be interested uh, and willing to tell us about uh, the places and faces that kind of were meaningful to them and got them through uh, the pandemic or that have been meaningful to them despite. Um, so these are the eight um, individuals that are part of that project. And so we are we will be having a showcase event on the 20. Third, which is next Thursday, uh, you can register to watch that online, or you can still get, um, you can still be in person at the event. We're, uh, I think we're up to about 65, 70 people now, uh, which is a phenomenal um, turnout. Uh, the stories, again, are so, um, I think we're going to be living, uh, going to be doing something too. And we wanted to show you, um, I think you want to show the, oh, you can oh okay. Speak. Um, so basically placemaking is one of the things I learned from Cass. When you go back to the very first photo that she showed in this presentation of the dome, um, as a the, the sports dome as a walking place was a third place for a lot of people. They maybe they had their home, they maybe had work, and then they had a third place that they chose to go to. And for many people, we realized what were some of those places that connected you during the pandemic. Um, and one of the first stories that we told was in a digital story um, was um, um, Lynn's story about her home and the fences around her. And this story has been shown by um, Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation on some of their national conferences. And we wanted to show it to you today. I live in Thunder Bay, and I'm back in the same house I grew up in, in the 1950s. Back then, we lived in a neighborhood that was built by Central Mortgage and Housing for veterans. There were strict regulations, so what homeowners could and could not do. The lease agreement stated that homeowners could not 
build a fence higher than three feet. So as a result, the kids ran free. Mums ritually had coffee at each other's houses, and doors were never locked. There were no fences that you could actually see into our neighbor's backyard. When I needed my mother, I would go into the upstairs, look out of the bedroom window, and see if she was having coffee with our next door neighbor. If she wasn't there, I would go out to the bedroom on the other side of our house and look out to see if she was in the kitchen of another house. In those days, neighbors knew each other, and if you needed help, it was easy to find someone. It's different now. Backyard fences are everywhere, and it seems people value their privacy more. I miss that openness. On one hand, I enjoy the privacy of my backyard and the beauty of nature around me. But on the other hand, I don't really know my neighbors. I know of them, but I don't really know them. Sure, we say hello to one another in passing, but there are no real conversations, and I miss the warmth, the interaction, and the caring for one another. Now when I get up in the morning, I like to take my coffee and cereal out to the back deck. I eat breakfast and watch the birds, squirrels, and all other critters that come by. At night, I watch for northern lights, watch for fireflies, and listen to the crickets. They replace my human neighbor's visits in my backyard. I take out a cup of sunflower seeds out for them and see who's going to come around. They make me closer to nature. I feel connected to life a bit more. To me, this is my time of tranquility and serenity. We wanted to show you that picture because um, during the pandemic, uh, front porches and front yards became lifelines for people and backyards were the only place where people could feel safe. Um, so it really kind of uh, ties into how you can do such incredible things with digital stories and how they can stand up no matter what year you make the story and how you get generate people to, to talk. Yeah, and from like a research perspective, just being engaged and embedded within the community for even just this um, short amount of time that I have um, has really been insightful in guiding uh, my my work um, in research. So this this concept is, of place has kind of really been um, important to a lot of people uh, throughout um, these many projects even when it wasn't um, <laughs> the main focus of the, of the event or the purpose of the stories, like these things are coming through regardless. So it'll, it is, this concept of placemaking is what I am looking at and the sense of belonging and sense of community that comes through with engaging in uh, meaningful activities in different places. Um, in my dissertation, but it's also just been really impactful and interesting to hear other people's stories because in my opinion, narrative and storytelling is the most powerful kind of way to hear about different works. And when people are asking, how do you, how do you make the knowledge translation or the knowledge mobilization after you've done your research? And I just think it's more fun potentially to have these things happen and then write the papers about them first. Let them naturally occur in community and work with them uh, to do that. Um, so here we've just put some of our information on here, but just wanted to open it up to the group, unless you had anything else you want to say. No, just the whole thing with a lot of times we talk about what we've talked about in our little thread here today was communities, collaborations, connections, use of creativity, and the circle. And it all comes back to your, um, John came up with a, a team of eight that we continue to use when we talk about giants and people and finding your team. Um, and um, it's been wonderful. And we'd really love to hear some of your questions or, or thoughts on what you've seen today.
Yeah, is there any um, questions about any of the projects you've done in the past or going on? Have you been involved in anything um, community-based that has been similar or different? We can, we can pick yeah. on people, but no, 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 no. Um, just, I guess, just for me, I think, again, it's the power of the invitation, as Judy mentioned earlier, um, inviting people to participate, helping people to participate in things. Um, just looking at for us, some of the, um, uh, and never kind of assume that people will say no. Um, when you ask them if they want to collaborate on a project, um, sometimes it just haven't been asked. Um, and that can be someone to participate in the creative pro side of the project or someone that maybe is um, would be willing to give you funding for something. Yeah, and an interesting part too with all of these projects is the that it's been um, community driven from the beginning, but not necessarily only community driven, but driven by older adults in the community. We have a question, Mark. No, what's, from Laurel oh, and Judy. Oh, go ahead. what's a new activity you have planned that you're looking forward to? New activity I have planned, <laughs> other than the places and places digital stories. Yeah, we've got that kind of right on our mind right now because yeah. that's on Thursday. Um, but I think down the road we're 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 looking at we we're doing some kind of cool stuff with housing and things. So yeah, yeah, yeah there are. Um, I I'm okay. not sure if I am, um, if you hear me. Yeah, uh, we can uh, hear you. Yaro, uh, Yaro Kotarik. Uh, uh, it was very good to see you again today. I just wanted to say that it seems to me that, well, I cannot believe it is now five years, or close to five years since we had that first encounter and that workshop and so on. That was a wonderful experience. And, uh, but since that time, there has been nothing like that really, you know, be similar. You have really invented a social, uh, it's a social invention you made, you know, uh, putting people together in this way and finding something they can get engaged in and they can uh, actually validate their life and the, what they do and what they, what they are aiming for. And so I just wanted to congratulate you to that. I, my question would be, would be, would there um, any, uh, is there a similar program like that in the continent, or you are quite unique in what you're doing? Um, for the, like for the digital story, thanks, Yaro. It was awesome to work with you um, on the first uh, Giants project, and we super appreciate all the effort you put into there. Um, but with this, this um, placemaking project, the Places and Faces, so that's another eight new digital stories that have come out. So mm -hmm. um, earlier this fall, we had it, we put out an, a call for an, in, um, inviting people to be part of that. Um, but as of right now, um, locally, uh, in addition to that project, I don't know of any other kinds of digital story specific programming that's taking place. Um, but I know we do have some very keen older adults that have been part of our, our volunteering on those projects that have been um, kind of taking it upon themselves to do their own iMovies um, and uh, assisting others and kind of using that technology. I think there's just, there's a little bit more that needs to be done to kind of um, help people learn that technology so that you can be able to do more of these things on your own. But like we said too, and we discussed that there's a real power in kind of being together um, for those moments and sharing with others and, and collecting it. So we'll, we'll continue to do this kind of work. And Judy Martin, um, Judy works at the, um, at the health unit in Thunder Bay. And she talks about the age-friendly Shaw, Spot, Shaw mm -hmm. Spotlight Show um, that features local people. So people who aren't in Thunder Bay, you can't access our Shaw Spotlight. Uh, but again, yeah engaging older people and getting some stories from that. And older people, I'm now 65, so I can actually call myself mm -hmm. that category. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I wanted to just mention a couple of projects that I've had a little involvement with um, 
in Toronto, and I'm not sure how what they're doing right now, but one of the projects is called Mapping Our Memories, and it just reminds me so much of what you've been talking about. And um, I think it's an ongoing project, but it's also creating little videos and then mapping them or pinning them on a map mm -hmm. so that you can watch the video from this digital map. Um, I was actually going to mention your program to the person there at, in Toronto at Backlane Studios because she's also doing this with a New Horizons for Seniors grant. Mm -hmm. And I think they call it Silver Docks. But um, and then another one very recently similar in that it's all about place. And so it's another map where you can pin a poem that you've written. And it's a whole other um, kind of project, but they're hoping to work with older adults in the fall. So um, that's through York University. Very cool. And that app is called the Phone Me app. And it's all about place making and poetry so very neat very mm -hmm. cool thank you <laughs> so yes, much it's neat to hear about different things that are yeah. happening in different parts of the country but on a similar path yeah and if there if, if you have links to those we'd love to <laughs> receive them and even be able to send them out to, to Yaro and some of the people here I'll in case there's I things that they want to the I'll see if I can put them in the chat for you yeah, thank you yeah and put a link to your program that you're doing in Toronto as well, because it, it might be of interest to people. Okay. A lot of, your, a lot of things you're doing are um, using computers. You so. want to put your video on? Oh, yeah. Okay, I will try and do that. <laughs> yeah. Hi, John. Hi, Nancy and Cassandra. You know, it's um, it feels really good to sit back and hear about the projects that have continued. The, uh, back in when we first did the first bunch of digital stories, I never thought uh, you, we'd end up with this kind of a, a ball rolling. But uh, so it's really good to hear those things. And, and since moving to Ottawa, uh, you know, because I was inspired by the stories we did in Thunder Bay, um, we encouraged uh, Compassionate Ottawa to do a series of of stories on uh, giving or getting help, you know, and um, you know they turned out to be very, very good as well, and can be found on Compassionate Ottawa's site. So um, I just want to say congratulations, and and really, really great to see that things are uh, uh, still very lively, <laughs> still, still moving on. Yeah. We try. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, those okay. uh, the, those videos for the for Compassionate um, Ottawa are also available online. If that's if there's something that you're interested yeah. um, in viewing, some more of these different kinds. So in addition to the ones that are going to be the ones that we're doing the showcase for next week will also be the the big launch is a live launch. You can tune in um, via Zoom or in person here in Thunder Bay at the Thunder Bay Museum. But you can also after that they'll be archived on the Thunder Bay Museum website. So you'll have access to those if you want to go on your own time or, you know, use them in, in the work that you're doing. There is potentially some papers coming out on, on, uh, on those reviewing the content and development of these digital stories. So well, I'll get up there and cheer when Cassandra gets her PhD. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, well, but I, I think, again, I guess, I, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm 65 right now. Um, so it's it's been a while getting here because I've always worked, most of my career has been with uh, older adults. Now I really officially am what I would consider an older adult, um, although I'm on the young old side. Um, and it's very interesting because I've always had mentors along in my career. Um, and I look, and mentors are usually people who are older than me. Um, but I look at Cass as one of my mentors, and I look at a lot of the people, I see their names here um, on the list, like John Cosgrove and Mary Lou Kelly and my husband, Mark, <laughs> um, you know, that are in our audience today are people that um, are mentors to me and, and make me feel that this work I do, much of it's unpaid, as we realize, um, 
uh, but really important. And so I'm just super happy that um, we've had a chance to kind of mm -hmm. give you some of our enthusiasm for the power of story um, and the multiple ways that it can bring people together to collaborate, but create those friendships and connections that will last a lifetime. And thank you so much for it. I kind of want to take a little poll here if you can aim for that would be great. If not, no pressure. Uh, thank you so much for attending this afternoon. Um, we just tried to rush through a couple of the different projects we, we've been on, but it's it's really just a dream to be working on projects that are meaningful in the community. Being able to do that for work um, is just a, a an awesome feeling <laughs> to be able to um, and be involved in the community and as well have that be tied to to work and improving um, the lives, even if it's just for the amount of time people are involved in it. But as we can see, at least moving forward, <laughs> and there's uh, more long term outcomes kind of coming out of this work. Thanks everyone. Um, the, a lot of the, uh, we'll, we'll try to get you the, the phone me app is up there um, that Anne had mentioned in the chat. Um, and again, um, my great pleasure to connect with Cass. Uh, <laughs> we started in 2015, um, pretty soon when she had, does have her PhD and she's Dr. Cass, I'll, I'll have to pay her a lot of money to participate in her research. But <laughs> in the meantime, it's a, it's a great pleasure to be part of on this adventure with you. Yeah. It's nice. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye, guys.